Welcome back. We've been looking at a series of applications of cryptography. We're going to look at another one today, which is called digital signatures. Okay, so what's the idea? Well, imagine that you go to the grocery store and you write a check. What does you want that check to accomplish for you? Well, first of all, it's going to authorize the transfer of funds, and so you want that to be secure. But the check then is a tangible object that people can look at and, and gain some confidence that you actually did make that authorization. The signature on the check confirms the authenticity. And if you claim, for example, that you didn't write that check, then you know, if somebody cared to, they could bring in a handwriting expert and, and say, yes, you did or no, you didn't. So they can confirm the authenticity of your signature. The check should be unalterable. That is, you don't want a check in which somebody else might write a few more zeros on there and, and cost you a bunch of money. Uh, and then the signature on the check should be such that it can't be easily removed and then affixed to a different document. So this is what happens in the real world when you sign a document. What about if you're sending an, an important document via email or electronically? Can we come up with a scheme by which you can have an analogous digital signature which is accomplishes the same kinds of things? Okay, so what do we want then? We want a function which we can apply to the identity of the sender and to the message, okay? And the uh, properties that this function should have, that we'll call this the signature function, is that it should be unforgeable in that it, it must be hard for anybody else to produce that signature. It should be authentic in the sense that someone can verify that it actually was, in this case, S, who signed the document. Uh, the flip side of that is there's no repudiation. That is, S can't later come back and say, well, that's not my signature, because an independent party can verify that it actually is S's signature. It should be tamper-proof. That is, you don't want to attach a signature to a document which can then subsequently be modified, um, just as with a check. And it should be non-reusable. That is, it shouldn't be possible for someone to strip the signature off and attach it to a different document. A different way of saying that is that the signature should be bound to the document. Okay, well, recall that we have these public key infrastructure things in place, uh, and in particular we have RSA, which has the property that we can use either key for encryption or for decryption, and then use the other for the inverse function. Okay, so if, if S wants to sign a message M, uh, and send it to R, S could do the following. And we've seen this, this locution before. Uh, you take the message and you sign it or encrypt it with S's private key, and then you encrypt the result with R's public key. Um, most of the time, actually, it's not the message itself that gets signed in this way, it's a hash of the message. And if you recall, the reason for that is because uh, public key encryption is, is expensive to apply, and the message may be arbitrarily long, but the hash is going to be a fixed, finite, short value. Okay, so what, what uh, assurances does R gain from this interchange? And in particular, do they gain, does it gain the same assurances that we wanted on the previous slide? Okay. Well, let's take a look. So here's the message that gets sent. Um, this message is unforgeable. Remember, that was one of the things that we wanted. Why? Because the inner encryption is done with S's private key, and presumably only S has S's private key. It's authentic because you can verify that that encryption was done by S by uh, verifying it with S's public key, which should be available to almost anybody. Th for the same reason there's non-repudiation. That is, S can't say, I didn't sign this, unless S gave its private key to someone else to use because it was uh, verifiably signed with S's private key. That means only S could have done it. It's tamper-proof. Why? Because of this outer layer of encryption. Um, because we've encrypted with R's public key, that means no one else can strip off that layer of encryption except R. And finally, it's non-reusable because if you notice, the signing is really the encryption of the message itself. And so there's no way to separate the signature from the message. Okay, so what have we said? Well, we can come up with a scheme that will allow us to have digital signatures, which give us many of the same 
advantages that we want from our physical signature on a document. Ideally, that means that the signature should be unforgeable, authentic, tamper-proof, there should be non-reusable, non and allow no repudiation. And the way of doing that is by using public key encryption. In fact, there are various signature algorithms which effectively follow this, though they have different details. Thanks much.